The Nameless Horror. Real and terrible beyond all words, defying all description, this ghastly gargantuan monster appeared for human eyes to witness for the first time. At the sight of it, fear drove men to madness or to suicidal death. Help me! Help me! Ah! The natives chanted their wariness as the safari threaded its way into the black maw of the unexplored jungle, when suddenly a cry rang out and they broke ranks in terror. Tagunu! 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 What's wrong, Dijon? What's gotten into those crazy fools? They go no farther. This is rumored habitat of Tangunu, the white ape. He is the god and soul of all apes. Claybreaker's eyes narrowed. His nostrils flared in a perverse elation, even as Enid, his blonde and beauteous fiance, avowed her fear. A white ape. What a prize to take back to the zoo. God of the apes, eh? Hmm, we'll see that this god is humbled. Oh, Clay, I'm, I'm frightened. Let's turn back. We have the animals we came for. No, we're gonna move on. Come on, move. Move, I say, you jungle mules. That'll take care of you and any others who try to desert. Cowed by Breaker's viciousness and the threat to their lives, the natives forged ahead. The night polluted the day with a sudden inky blackness and the jungle pulse beat alive with its incessant noises and prowling shadows. Oh, Clay, look! Tangunu! The jungle earth trembled beneath the monstrous weight of the tremendous giant of an ape. A white ape leaped into view, beady eyes gleaming, fangs gnashing. The wire nets, let him go on every side. The huge beast lashed out with a fury that was as the raging seas and stormy, lightning-rent skies. Imprisoned in the steel mesh that cut him like bare blades, he battled still, flinging the terrorist natives like paper figures. And at dawn... <coughs> down! Get him down! This chloroform will do it! He no fight now, but men afraid to carry him. Afraid or not, they'll do as I say. Give me that whip. Ah, no, no, we do as you say. Forward now, and no rest until we're clear of the jungle. Hour after grueling hour, they sweated and strained under the incredible weight of the inert monster. And all about them, a strange, eerie silence pervaded the jungle. The incessant chattering of the monkeys has stopped. Clay, there's not a thing moving. Well, what does it mean? Never mind that. Look, we've reached the town. Not a soul. Everything's deserted. Where is everybody, Dijon? They have big fear. The word of Tangunu travels fast as the wind to the jungle people. Oh, Clay, let the creature go, I implore you. I have a premonition. It has been said that no force on earth can keep Tangunu from the jungle. But Clay Breaker was deaf to all pleas to release the fantastic monster. At last, an antiquated cargo ship bound for the States was tempted by Breaker's high passage fee. And within several days... Darling, no, don't tell me you're going down to that thing again. Yes, I never tired of viewing my magnificent prize. Yes, during the long days at sea, Clay Breaker would stand alone before the heavily barred cell for interminable hours, watching, leering, triumphantly at his prey. God of the apes. Well, bow down, you god. You've met your master. Go on. Snarl your head off. What can you do? Go ahead. Do something. Ah! 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 What's going on down there? Don't do that, Mr. Breaker. That thing will get loose and kill us all. But as the monster's screams rang out, Breaker seemed to go berserk. His conquest of Tangunu's Herculean strength had in some curious way affected his mind. Darling, please, please don't torment that creature anymore. He's mine to do with as I choose. Mine! And almost at any time of day or night, Breaker would return to his sadistic divertisement. But once he stepped too close, Giant jaws snapped at his shoulder. Ow! Ow! Oh, my shoulder! He screamed in agony and passed out. Sometime later, when he opened his eyes again, he was in the ship's infirmary. Darling, are, are you all right? He is this time, but he was mighty lucky. Maybe next time. We'd better leave him alone now, miss, so he can get some rest. Something's wrong with me. I feel strange. What is it? His temple pulse was racing and pounding and he strained his eyes to examine his hands and arms. He shuddered as he saw. My hands are stiff, appear swollen rather larger than usual and my skin, the texture is 
so coarse and more hairy. Is it some disease I've contracted from the bite of the ape? During the night, his wide open feverish eyes attested to his strange restlessness while all others slept. Suddenly he arose, senses numb, body rigid, as though in a trance. I am coming, I am coming. He descended the gangway to the cell where the beady eyes gleaming in the darkness drew him like a magnet, closer and closer. The monster stood up to its full and fearsome height and with a frightening intelligence pointed to the cell lock and Breaker responded. <laughs> the monster lumbered up the gangway and seconds later terrifying shrieks were heard. It shocked Breaker to awareness. He tried to run up the gangway, but found his body he heavy and clumsy. He could barely make it. Ugh, what's the matter with me? How did I get down here? Help me, somebody, help me. He's broken loose and freed the contingent of wild animals. There he goes up the mast. Pull in the sail, pull in the sail and he'll fall. Breaker's own voice, croaking and deep, was strange to his own ears as he shouted, Allowed an alarm, the monster lost a hold on the dropping canvas and, look out, here he comes. Come on, let's pick him up and carry him down before he comes too. That skull of his is thick enough, so he will. Only six men are lifting him now. He's lighter and less hairy. He said nothing, but a stroke of fear quaked through him. Presently, Enid ran to him in the shadows and flung her arms around him, but then she drew away. Darling, I... Something is different about you, I... Clay, wait! Don't go! Oh, please, Clay! Please open the door and let me inside! Clay, why won't you listen? He remained in his stateroom, mute to her pleas. Summoning his courage, he glanced at himself in the vanity mirror under the light streaming through the porthole. He stifled a scream at the sight. My, my jaw is ponderous and my cheekbones high and large. And my breathing so deep and labored. What's happening to me? What, what's happening to me? I'm, I'm changing. Fear drove him to sleep, his only refuge. That night, night, he awakened again and started down the gangway, his steps jerky and strange, his will curiously passive. Beady, hypnotic eyes drew him in a weird, unearthly fascination. An utterly unworldly transformation beyond the understanding of man was taking place there in the darkness, and minutes later, Horrified, Enid was shocked to wakefulness by a brutish pounding on the stateroom door. Who is that? Oh no! Ah! Ah! She screamed in terror. How could she know her fate was in the arms of one whose embraces she had known many times? Save me, please! Ah! Get him in! Watch the girl! Ah! My neck! Oh! Oh! We've got to force him to put down the girl. The girl's out of range. Fire those guns. <laughs> We're done with the monster, but half of us are gone too. Look, the harbor, the state's at last. Clay, oh darling, what an ordeal. She made her way tearfully toward him, but he was strangely cool, distant uncommunicative. When we get to the States, we'll forget all this and we'll be married. When the boat touches shore, I am returning to the jungle, alone. And when she gazed into his eyes, cold, thin slits of ice she had seen only in another being, one monstrous and terrible. Enid had a glimpse of the incredulous, soul-contorting truth. Tangunu would return to the jungle after all.